Cool 98.7, Bismarck Mandan's greatest hits, The Knack and My Sharona. Wish with you at 820. And joining me now from Gateway to Science, Executive Director Beth Demke is here. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Wish. I'm great. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Well, I'm here to talk to you because, of course, we've got the big solar eclipse going on today. So first off, I have to ask you, why the heck is everyone freaking out about this thing today? Well, it, it, it's quite rare. You know, we don't get to see a total eclipse every every day, every year. And um, in the United States, it's crossing a great long path. It's going to take about 90 minutes to cross from Oregon all the way to South Carolina. So it's it's a pretty big deal for our country because we don't get to see this very often. Now, of course, there's a small stretch of the country that will see a total eclipse. We won't see a total eclipse, but we'll see a mostly eclipse, right? Yeah, we're going to see about 84% coverage, which is a pretty big deal. It's going to get pretty dark. Yeah, so let's talk about that. How, how dark is it going to get? What are we going to... What, what can people say? Is it going to be similar to like sunset or what? Well, probably like sunset. You know, around here in, in Bismarck, the sunset's pretty late anyway. Right. So I would say, you know, it's going to feel like it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And I've heard, summer night. I've heard some people say that uh, animals, especially nocturnal ones, can go nuts in this situation. Will we experience that here well, possibly? They may act like it's nighttime. So, you know, we, I've heard accounts of chickens going to roost and animals kind of finding their their nighttime places, nocturnal animals coming out of their daytime places, you know, and starting to hunt, those kinds of things. So yeah, that that can happen. Yeah. I don't know about going nuts, but you know, <laughs> well, cer- you know. certainly changing their behaviors um, from what would normally happen in the middle of the day. All right. All right. Talking with Beth Demke, Executive Director, Gateway to Science. Now, of course, uh, it's important that you never look directly at the sun, including today. So including there's today. these solar eclipse glasses, right. which... The, I mean, I know they call them solar eclipse glasses. Are anybody using these things for any other purpose at all? I, I wouldn't expect so, because when you look through them, you, it, it is absolutely black. So you put them on over your eyes. I mean, I see absolutely nothing here. Um, the only thing that you're going to see through these is the sun itself. So as you said, it's not safe to look at the sun at any time. And I think it's not any brighter with the solar eclipse. It's just that things are happening. And so we're naturally curious. And so we tend to look. Something's happening. So we're going to look at that. Um, so the the reason for the solar eclipse glasses is, is that you can then view it safely. Now, it's not the only way to view it safely. These are a really hot commodity. Um, they're sold out all over the yeah. country. We sold out of 400 pair in less than 45 minutes at the <laughs> Science Center. And I know the, the library was giving them away here in Bismarck and Mandan, both libraries. Um, so they're really tough to get. So we also have lots of cool things. We're going to have a viewing party. I'll talk about that in a minute. But on our website, gatewaytoscience.org, we have these cool pinhole viewer, a tutorial on how to make it. All you need is a box. It can be a cereal box, a shirt box, a Kleenex box. It doesn't matter. And all you need is a box, a piece of paper, and a little piece of foil and you can make this viewer. And the, the cool thing about this is, especially for kids, is that you turn your back to the sun. So right. you're not even looking at the sun, and you're looking into the box, and the projection is going to go onto the inside back wall of the box. Very cool. Yeah, it's really cool how that thing works. And like you said, you'll have those at Gateway to Science later, and then you have boxes that go over people's heads and stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna we're gonna see a whole bunch of blockheads out on the lawn. Um, boxes are another cool thing. You actually put the box over your head, and then it's projected inside, and so you've got your own little world of of the solar eclipse going on inside there. So, you know, there's a lot of really cool ways. We've also got some binoculars set up to that'll project onto a, a screen. We've got telescopes where we're, we've set up some funnels, like a funnel filter to, to show the eclipse. Um, a lot of really interesting ways to, to watch the eclipse in, in ways other than just the glasses. All right, talking with Beth Demke, Gateway to Science Executive Director. Now, if people... Um or viewing the eclipse, you know, we talk about it starts at this time, it peaks at this time, it ends at this time. What, what exactly is happening during that time, and is there that much to see before it peaks? Yeah, there actually is. You know, it takes time for the moon and the, and the earth, and, you know, everything is in motion, right? So as things are moving, um, it takes about two hours for the whole process. As the moves, moon begins to cover the sun, that'll happen around 1130 or so, and it'll take a couple of hours before that whole thing 
finishes. The maximum coverage around our area is going to be about 1252, about 84 percent, and it'll last a couple of minutes. So it's not a big long time for the maximum coverage, but you can see a lot going on for that two-hour period. All right. And you guys, of course, are having a viewing party. Tell us about that and where that is and how that's going down. Yeah. The party is going to start at about 11 and we'll run it till about 2. And it's very laid back. We're going to have a lot of ways to view, as I mentioned, with the pinhole viewers and the binoculars and the telescope. We're going to live stream NASA um, because they'll be in the path of totality. So we'll get a chance to see that. Um, we'll have some other things. We've got some trivia games, some other cool things about the eclipse. Our educational outreach coordinator, um, Courtney Stoltz, has some fun things planned to just explain how how the eclipse happens. Because as I mentioned, it's it's fairly rare. The Earth and the Moon are both orbiting. You know, you've got the Earth orbiting around the Sun. You've got the Moon orbiting around the Earth, and their orbital paths are different. They're they're off off-center. The, the moon's off at about a 5% tilt. So lining up in the way that it has to line up to get a total eclipse is is not something that happens all the time. So Courtney can explain that even better than I can, so we're going to let her do that. All right. Where are you guys <laughs> located, for those who don't know? Yeah, we're at 1810 Schaefer Street over in Bismarck, um, just north of Bismarck State College. So it's a real easy way to find us, exit 157 off of I-94. And uh, as I said, it's real laid back. We're going to be out on the south lawn. We encourage people to bring their lunch, bring a, sh- bring a chair, bring a blanket. We're just going to hang out on the lawn and see this really cool, awesome event. Now, I, I should ask this uh, because it is cloudy <laughs> it is outside. Funny. Uh, yeah. In case the clouds don't disappear, and I think that they should, but in case they don't, can you still experience the eclipse? Will it still be something cool to watch even if there's cloud cover? You still can experience. You Obviously, it's not going to be quite the dramatic effect that it would be if, if the sun were completely exposed. But even with clouds, you're going to see that it gets dark. You should be able to see some aura. As you... As you look at it, at the sun through the clouds, you can usually see that there's still a round sun through the clouds. You'll be able to see that the round, the sun is not round, the sun is still covered. So we'll be able to see something. It just won't be quite as dramatic. Gotcha. Beth Demke, Executive Director from Gateway to Science. Thanks so much for stopping by this morning. Yeah, I appreciate it.